Hello, everybody. Welcome to Fruitful Trees, and I have went full circle. I am at this amazing house orchard here today of fruit trees. And when I first got started in fruit trees, I was coming to this place here in Lake Worth, Florida, and they're near another nursery. And I would stop off at this place. It was a, a fellow with his little house nursery, and then they closed for years. I thought they sold the property or something, but I recently put a note in the mailbox and I said, I knew the old owner, I'd love to come and film your yard, because this is one of the first yards that inspired me to grow fruit trees. It turns out it's the same owner, he just retired. So he's not selling uh, fruits anymore, uh, but he invited me to come to his house. And today we're gonna take a tour at his house. This is where it started for me, my passion for growing these fruit trees, because I was going all over the, all over the world tasting fruits anyway prior to that. But to see what grew here locally was amazing. So we're gonna go around today with Joseph and see what he's got growing on here. Uh, there's no contact information for him. He's retired and he wants to stay at peace, but he has a ton of jackfruit trees and sapodillas and mangoes and star apples. And he has great information. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so glad I, I, I got in touch with him again. But these, most of his jackfruit seeds, many of them are seedlings. And we're gonna learn a lot about seedling jackfruits today. Uh, really cool information and he plants them pretty close and we're going to go to the front also I'm going to show you how close he actually plants them but here we are at another tour I've won full circle and we're going to take a tour now around this amazing farm so here we go but here we have some sapodilla trees yes now you say you've been here 41 years mm -hmm. now when you came here the property uh, was completely empty yes other than 72 pine trees okay and now I only have three left <laughs> So you took down 72 pine trees, okay. Well, uh, 69 trees, palm trees, I took down. Wow. And, and Yourself, or you had somebody to take well, them out? Myself, but some of them I took out because of the house when I built it. And then uh, I built a barn back there and took some out. And then uh, the hurricane took a few out. And uh, the uh, hurricanes in 2004 and five, Gene... I mean, Francis, Jean, and then the next year, Wilma did quite a toll. All the trees were flattened at that time. So it was quite a chore getting them all back up. If that happens again, I'm, I'm just going to leave them down. I, I, won't, I don't have the energy anymore to do that because that was a lot of work. Now, I remember you told me back then you had uh, five acres here, right? No, two and a half. Two and a half acres. Okay, you have two and a half acres here. Mm -hmm. When you bought the property, was it your goal to have fruit trees, or is that just a thought that came later? No, it, it came later. Uh, I was uh, a full-time employee working for IBM. I retired in 95, and that's when I started this nursery in 95. So uh, I started planting trees. Got my ag exemption, and then uh, uh, af after that, I was actually selling a lot of trees, even small trees. I had them all over the place. And then uh, about, I don't know, maybe at least five, six years ago, I, I quit selling little trees. And then for the last two years, uh, all uh, up to... Two years ago, I was just selling fruit. Now I, I don't even do that anymore. So so when you have your ag, ag exemption, does that mean you just have a lot of trees or does that mean you're selling it as a business? As a business. Okay, okay. It's a Schedule C that you that you you can do it. And uh, this area is zoned agriculture. Uh, although if someone else tries to set it up, Right now, you can't get it. They've changed the rules changed now. The rules. So you grandfathered in. Yeah, but I'm grandfathered in. Exactly. I think you need 10, year, 10, uh, uh, 10 acres now. And about the closest area would be west of 441 to where you can okay. do something like How that. How many trees do you have here on two and a half acres, roughly around? About 225 fruit trees. 225 fruit trees and some non-fruit. Well, I have, there's, there's several palms okay. around, things like that. And then uh, there's there's a few trees or flowering trees. Okay, I have now, a lot of big palms. Big palms. Where do you get most of your fruit trees? Uh, it's a combination. Uh, uh, at that time, I mean, I I did some traveling down in uh, Homestead. Got some down there. I bought some from Excalibur over here. I bought some from Zills. 
and and uh, so different nurseries. Different nurseries. Okay. Um, are all of your trees grafted, or are some of them from seeds? Well, they most of the ones from seed are jackfruit because they do better than the grafted ones, and they they produce in the same amount of time. But uh, most of the other ones are grafted. Okay. So here we have your sapodilla corner. You have one, two. There's three sapodillas right here, right? Right there, yeah. And these are pretty big. Do you ever prune them? Yeah, I top them. Okay. Yeah, these have these have been topped uh, once already. What kind of uh, sapodillas are these? Because there's three uh, here. There's, uh, let's see, this one here is a lano. Lano, okay. Uh, I think all three of these are lanos. Okay. So when you planted them, there's different varieties of, of sapodilla. Did you, why'd you plant three of the same variety back then? Well, because uh, is that the only uh, famous one around back then? Well, no, that was my. Uh, I mean, I have three varieties on on here, okay. and and I was planting more than one for income. Got you, because you were selling the fruit. That makes sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and the, the Alanos is a very popular one. A lot sure. of people like the small sapodilla. And That's how sure. far apart did you plant them? Uh, let's see. It depended on on the on the sapodillas. I think around 15, 15 feet or so. Fifteen feet. Okay. It looks about fifteen. And these trees, the Alano sapodilla, they will grow tall, but you can keep them small, and they'll still fruit just fine. So you oh, did yeah. good with those. And then here's this whole row here. I believe is seedling jackfruits. Am I correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So it's, here it's we go. Up. So these are all seedling jackfruits. Any particular? seedling variety or just whatever seed you had no uh it's mostly my ones my one seedlings okay. because they have the maximum amount of uh meat content okay on, uh, and there you go there's some close to here now i see you have water here it looks rusted do you still water these on a regular basis yeah I, every every tree's got a sprinkler okay now these don't look too far apart how far apart would you say oh those? these are a lot closer these are probably uh 10 feet maybe. Okay, so when you planted the jackfruit 10 feet apart all here. Yeah, jack, jackfruit you can tend to put a little closer because the way they grow, they're more of a tall cylindrical type tree that grows up. Not all of them, but a lot of them are. So, uh, so would you say if you don't have, I mean, if you plant them tight, then they'll grow up. But if you plant them just by themselves, then they'll grow wide. Uh, generally, yes. Generally, yeah. And so yeah. there's sapodillas in the back and jackfruits here in the front. Okay. Yeah, there, I have a, there's a lychee there, malicious lychee. Okay, how's that one doing? Any problems with the mite? Yes. Okay. Last year I was terrible. I, I didn't really have any crop. I sprayed them constantly with sulfur. And uh, now I'm, I'm getting some back again uh, with, the, with the mites. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, okay. And, and uh, so, yeah, these are... These are fairly close here. And these jackfruits always produced well for you. Oh, yeah. Great. Now, do you top these? Yes. Okay. Yes, I've gone down here and topped all these. Okay. Maybe once a year or once every couple of years? I'd say once every couple of years. Okay. Not every year. That's an interesting one. There's three. Is that three seeds or that's one that's branched out? No, it's just one that branched out like that. Wow. All right. And how are all these varieties? Do they all taste similar, or they're all well? Uh, different jackfruit can taste differently. However, uh, they get pollinated through the air, and as a result, uh, after a while, they, there's a lot of cross pollination. So you end up uh, like most of my trees now are my ones. Uh, I have a few others in the back that are different varieties but uh, for the most part they get cross-pollinated and they're about the same but uh, you, you'll see different characteristics on on various uh, jackfruit okay and here's another uh, it's sapodilla Alano. Alano okay and uh, more jackfruit and sapodilla in the back so that whole section is pretty much jackfruit and sapodilla. Yeah, with a couple of uh, leeches. leeches. Okay. So. And now here's the fence here. You're on a quiet street. Do you have ever have any issues with people? Yes. Oh, you do? So yeah, I've, I've had people 
jump the fence and steal my jackfruit. Really? I've, I've had that. But now uh, I've got Bob wire down there to try to protect the trees a little bit. Do you have cameras here as well? No. No? Okay. I just have a camera going down the driveway. This is a very unique tree right here. It's a jackfruit that has no meat in it. It's a bummer. Uh, it's the only tree I've ever had like that. It, it's just all rag inside. Oh, really? Yeah, no. And like, when did you realize that and why did you keep it? Uh, because it was a nice tree and I just left it. I mean, I got plenty of jackfruit, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. So these are the jackfruits you let the people take. <laughs> yes. They yeah. can have all they want of that one. Yeah. Okay. It's nothing but rag. Okay. Very close to these jackfruits. Okay. Yep. And as an, was that an oak tree, that one there? That's yeah, an it's an oak tree. Oh, okay. I'm going to be taking that down. It's kind of half rotten. Okay. So, I see, here's, uh, again, more my ones. That's characteristic of a my one. Okay, now it's... Uh, Mamey. Mamey, what variety of mamey is that? Uh, I think that's, it's uh, Lorida, Lorida. A what? Lorida. Lorida. See the tag there? Yeah, Lorida. I only Lorida, hear two mamey. types, Lorida and Pantene. Okay. Uh, they, they both look similar. Uh, they're very good ones. So you get a lot of mamey on there? Not on this tree, but one up front I do. The Pantene, okay. For some reason, this has never been a big producer here. But the one right by my driveway, just yes. near your car, produces a lot every year. Nice. And do you top work them as sometimes? Do you top them? No. You never prune them? I never pruned them, yeah. Okay. Okay, this is a Shriek and Bang and Carambola. Shriek and Bang and Carambola. Yeah. And uh, well, here's a bunch more, of more jackfruit here. Jackfruit right in front. And a couple of these little trees they're uh they're real small jackfruit and uh let's see what's that name small, small orange, orange jack jackfruit it's real orange from fruit. a seedling from seedlings, yeah. okay i just go with seedlings because they're so much better okay? i'm having fruit in two years we don't just see them yeah uh, they seem to be more hardy than grafted uh, the jackfruit in the corner is a black gold. That's a soft flesh. Yes, very uh, nice. Uh, that grows real big ones too. And uh, then we get into uh, mangoes. I have ten varieties of mangoes. This is a Cushman here. It's a rare, fairly rare one. Cushman, okay. All these are the, big mango trees. Do you ever top work these? Yes, a little bit. Okay. Uh, these are. I planted the mangoes at least 20 feet apart. So uh, so the jackfruits can do better closer. The mangoes need more space apart. Yeah, because they're just bigger trees. Okay. I, I mean, they spread out. There's everything. a Valencia, right? Yeah, right. both of these are Valencia. That one over there is a Cary. Uh, that tree there is another Alano. And then I have these uh, June plums. They call them June plums or, or uh, like you see them on the ground here. Yeah, that's a big, big tree. That's the biggest June plum tree I've seen. Yeah, well, there's two types of June plums. There's a real small one and giant ones. And all mine are just giants. They sure are. Look at that. Now, are these always yellow or are they sometimes red? No, these are always, that, they fall green and then they'll turn yellow. Wow. And they're delicious. I, I probably sold 1,500 pounds. That's the only other customer I have. She wants my June plums. She picks them and uh, sends them all north somewhere. So, and this thing went down in a hurricane. I had a hell of a time with this thing. This thing was huge. How old is the tree? Uh, I don't remember. It's well over 10 years. Wow. Yeah, it's... This is not a heavy producer. I mean, you can see some green June plums on the tree up there. Yeah. Well, you can see quite a few up there, actually. Yeah. 
Is it the season now for them? Yeah. What's interesting, I always, now's the season for them. Uh, October, November, December, this season. And uh, they're called June plums. And I could never figure that out. But I took my new wife on a honeymoon to the, to, uh, the Polynesian Islands, to Tahiti. And we went on a tour. And they have June plums. And they're indigenous to that area. And that was in June. So then ah. I quickly figured out, ah, okay. Uh, the area, they do yes. produce June down there in the Southern Hemisphere. But up here, it's... Uh, October, November, December. Yeah. Now there's a tree that looks like it was in a pot, but the pot went into the ground. Uh, I mean, the roots went under the pot. <laughs> Mauritius leeches. Yeah, I don't know how many, but yeah, it's a Mauritius. So that was in a pot, but then the roots went through the pot, right? Um, At some point. In most cases, yes. I don't know how many roots are in the ground there, because there's there's just uh, holes on the bottom of pots. However, those roots can, can split it out after a while. Okay. This is a hasha. It's one of my best. Hasha uh, sapodilla. Hasha, yeah, it's really good. They're really nice. This is a uh, Kohala longan here. And uh, another Kohala longan in a pot. It's a 200 gallon pot. Wow. And then. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I think this one's a Hasha right here. Yeah. Sapodilla on the other side is an Alano. This is another Mauritius, uh, lychee here. Now and besides it, watering them, do you do any fertilizing or sprays on them? Yeah. Uh, fertilizing I do. I generally do that once a year and, and lot, sometimes uh, once in two years. Just lately, though, because I'm retired now and I'm I'm so I'm not that eager anymore. That's another my one jackfruit right there. Now, something we lost here. What's this? That was... that was a jackfruit. I don't know why it died, but uh, it's, it's funny. I've I've had two jackfruit die on me, and I don't I'm not sure why, but but anyway, and I don't care about that much because I'm I'm retired and. Uh, these are more jackfruit right here, very close together. You can see how they grow it kind of tall, more of a cylindrical pattern. Yeah. And then this is uh, this is a uh, carry mango here. I sell a lot of mangoes. That's probably my most uh, income type uh, trees is the uh, mangoes and mainly carry. I have about. 20 carry mangoes oh wow now see these are these are this is a fruit tree right here this is a canistill not 9681 they're the they're the big canistill they're they're uh they're almost like a teardrop yeah but they're good size size of a softball that's all and uh, you, what do you got going up there just some vines just some vines Th this area right here is called our rainforest <laughs> So I just let vines grow and everything. And the palms are African oil palms. They get very big. Okay. So. Uh, Do they hurt the trees, the vines, or you don't care? Well, I don't care. I don't think they hurt the tree. Okay. Uh, now. More jackfruit. More jackfruit. That's a mulberry in the pot there. Got you. So for the jackfruit, from two years, you from a seedling, you can possibly get fruit. Yes. Okay, and from the trees in the pots, what's your goal of having them in the pots and not in the ground? Uh, it was only in a pot because I didn't want to plant that big old mulberry there. Uh, I, I had a few left over from my working days there, and uh, I, uh, I didn't want to put them in the ground, and uh, I didn't sell them, so I just left them in pots. And that's a mulberry. It, it does produce some mulberries. But uh, I got, I had big mulberry trees, but I got rid of them because over the number of years, you zero in on what trees to grow for your maximum money, income. And mulberries was definitely not one of them. Sure, <laughs> sure. So if you wanted to move that, you think you 
not I mean by I yourself, but that could still be moved or Yeah, I could still move it. Okay, so the roots aren't rooted down most likely. Yeah, there's, there's always a few roots, but you, you can dig around them. Okay. So all right. Let's see. This is uh This is actually a jackfruit on the left here that's been taken uh -huh. over. And these are, uh, I forgot which ones these are. Where's the tag on it? It's a, this is more of a soft variety, soft flesh. Oh, here it is. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know what variety that was, so I, I just called it Jack. <laughs> It's a big green one. They're, they get huge. Wow. Really big. A bunch of jackfruits and... Yep, more jackfruit. Now see, I have a lot of these royal palms all around my pool and everything. They're huge now. Now, do the roots of the palm trees, do you think they affect the fruit trees at all? No, they don't. Okay. No, the, the roots don't go out very far. They probably only go out Radially, oh, two to three feet. And what about a coconut? Do you think they go out far? Or, you no, know, same thing. Same thing. The root ball is just thousands of little roots. They just go out. So uh, uh, it wouldn't be that difficult to transplant them, except for the size. Sure. Okay. This is a green star apple. Yes. So is that now... One of my favorites. So this, not the whole tree, just the bottom part here, right? Yeah, well, the, the whole tree. Oh, wow. Look how big that is. How old is that? Oh. Uh, it's probably, uh, let's see, from 95. It's, it's probably 20 years old. 20 years old. So this is a green star apple. And these shoots on the bottom, are these just seeds that fell and you let them just grow? No, uh, these are flowers right here. Those are flowers. Over Those there. are okay. flowers. That's my wife. She she likes these. Uh, All right. So here's the green. And, and is this getting water still, this one? Yeah, it does. I think I got a problem with the sprinkler on this one. Okay. But in 2004, when all the trees got knocked down, you know, part of the tree got split away. And uh, it, it's not been very uh, productive in the last few years. So I keep hoping that it's going to recover, but ever since those hurricanes, uh, they've done very poorly. Now, once they get established, do you need to keep watering them? Once they get established in the ground? No, and for a big tree, no. It's mainly small. So technically, your trees here, even though they get water, they don't technically need it as much as the small right, ones. Right, they don't. When they when they get big, they. Uh, the, you know, the water table enough. is yeah. only about four feet down here yeah. in the driest time of year. So yeah. uh, they get down in the water and they're okay. All right. Here's uh, three June plums again. These are very, I, boy, I, I probably sold over 1,500 pounds between these three trees here. Wow. Uh, okay, and then there's a carry mango. That's a carry mango also. And then this is, a, I think this was a hasha sapodilla, big ones. And maybe it's, oh, it's an ox. Yeah. Uh, these are real big ones. I got some in the back. They'll, they'll, they'll get like that. Wow. A huge ox. So this is a jujube. Which one? This one? Yeah. Well, wow, look how big the jujube gets. Oh, yeah. I've done a lot of trimming on that one. This is always giving me a time. Wow, it, the it, it wants to, gets it wants really to grow tall. out into my neighbors. <laughs> but you can keep it small, this one. Again, uh, yes, you, you can. Because I, I was told you cut them back after every season to this high, and then they just grow back. Oh, well, I just let it grow. Yeah. How old is this tree? Uh, it, it's probably at least 15 years old. Wow, this is a big, beautiful tree. And there's been times when this thing was just so loaded, unbelievable. Just full of fruit. Wow. It comes in generally January, February. These are some more. Jack, oh, watch your face here. Let me go this way. 
guy here. So encouraging with these jackfruits. These look like nice, smaller version jackfruits. Uh, yes, these are these are small ones. These are Vietnamese bananas. They're the small finger bananas, very okay. sweet. Okay. So. See, I planted trees right next to the fence here because I never worry about them going too far over. This is another uh, carry mango. The next mango there was a keat. Any uh, uh, bacterial black spot issues with your keat mangoes? No. No. Okay. No. I haven't had that problem. Okay. It's common. Keat and Kent get it up around uh -huh. here. Yeah. My biggest keat mango, and I have a picture of it on my phone. Uh, six and a half pounds. Wow, wow. Let me show you. Wow. So these are just a bunch of jackfruit. This is so encouraging, everybody. You can put jackfruit against your fence line. As long as people aren't going to take it, that's very encouraging. Yeah, I, I don't have no problem back here. It's just very in the front. Wow. <laughs> that's amazing. Six pounds? Six and a half. Six and a half pound mango. Yeah. Wow. It's like a little baby. <laughs> Amazing. I sold it to this that girl's father. And then I realized, hell, I didn't even get a picture of it. And so uh, I got it. I got him to take a picture of it. <laughs> so this is another jackfruit seedling? No, that's avocado. Oh, what kind of avocado? Um, we'll see. I think it's a seedling. Cuban yeah. avocado. avocado. I had, yeah, I had... Uh, Cuban guys that love avocados. So, uh, so anyway, I, I got a few of those. It hasn't produced yet, though. Okay, then uh, another carry. That's so, a non doc mine mango there, that big one over there. So, I see now you planted in rows back here these mangoes. Mm -hmm. It looks like, if I'm guessing, the mangoes are like 20 feet apart, 25 yes. feet apart, but it looks like you put something in between some of them. Uh, yes. Uh, this is a, a green star apple again. Okay, that's a green one. Don't move yet. yet. Uh, this uh, right here, I want to show everybody. So, this is what is this here? A leche? Or? That's a leche. That's yeah. a leche. He left it in the pot. But yeah. look how so tall it grew. Oh, yeah. They, they'll go pretty big in a pot. Wow. And there's no issue with the shading. Do you think that affects the fruit at all? Like some of these, it's a pretty shady uh, area. It will affect sapodillas. Uh, it's like this one right here. This is in the shade, and uh, it's never produced for me. Okay. It's too, it's too shaded. And this this here is a uh, so that's a sapodilla that's too shaded. So that one can create an issue. But this is a, a bigger green star apple. Exactly. And how does this one do with fruit? Oh, it produces good every year. Wow. And do you do these from seed or from grafts? Uh. I believe these are drafted. Wow, very nice. Very nice. Yeah. All right. Most trees I try to graft it. It's mainly the jackfruit. A couple of miscellaneous trees like avocados I planted seed. I'll show you one I planted in a seed out front. Let me get around. This is this is a uh uh, uh Valencia Pride. Wow. The next one there's a Glen. The next one beyond that is is an Edward. And uh, this is a Glen here. I take it back. No, I forgot. And all of these trees are huge. Oh, this is a Cary mango. A Cary. That's a Glen right there. So I know you got a lot of the old time mangoes. What do you think about all these new mangoes coming out from Zills now with all these new names? Well, I'm not familiar with them. I, I can't really speak to that. Okay. Uh, but these are all fiberless. They're very sweet. They melt in your mouth. And anybody who's ever bought any loves it. They just love them. I mean, it's really good. They have mango. a bunch of new ones now called uh, like... Uh, lemon zest and uh, pickerings are kind of an older one. Have you heard of pickering? No. Yeah, that's an older one. 
Well, you got the old classic mangoes here. Yeah, and, uh, the, the I know one. a lot of the research was making them smaller for the smaller yards. And uh, this is a carry uh, carambola there. Yeah, that's great. Another, another uh, car uh, star apple? St st no, sapodilla. Sapodilla, okay. There's a couple trees here that are really have big producers. There's a bunch of jackfruit up here. And of course, we're out of season right now for jackfruit. But when you say you say out of season, the trees are loaded. Well, or at least there's some on there. <laughs> yeah, this is the slow season right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the big season is say June through September, is is the where I get the most. But you'll you'll get jackfruit all year round. And you can plant them that close. Amazing. Yeah. In fact, I just gave two of them to, to a, a occupational therapist that's helping my wife. Wow. And again, if you if this was the only tree here, there were no other trees. Now it's growing up, but there's a good chance it would grow more wide if it was the only tree in your yard, right? Probably. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Probably. They reach for the sky there. Yeah. And this mango, uh, tag again, fresh from Yeah, dang racemi. A what? Dang racemi jackfruit. Oh, dang racemi jackfruit. That one there is a uh, black gold. Nice. Wow. I had a 63 pounder off that one a couple of years ago. Wow. Like that's my biggest mango. Uh, uh, jackfruit, 63 pounds? Yeah. Uh, we get a lot of uh, those lizards here. The uh, Geckos? Not geckos, but uh, what are they called? The, the big ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. So what's your biggest issue here? Is it squirrels? Is it raccoons? What's your issue here? It'd be raccoons. Raccoons. But like right now, I'm hardly ever bothered buy them because yeah. I don't care so much. So these, these grow pretty low on the soil, these my ones, right? Yeah. They, that's what happens when you plant a one, especially a seedling, they will tend to grow, the fruit will tend to grow near the bottom. And as a tree matures and gets bigger, they'll start migrating up the tree. So now these, those sapodillas here are called ox. And those are the ones that are like that. Wow. They're huge. And wow. I have some people on my phone. I have about 300 customers. I still have them on my phone, but I, I don't sell anymore. But anyway, uh, Excalibur, they, they pick them. And uh, they're really nice apodillas. So here's uh, some jackfruit that you left in the pots? Yes. Initially, I had the intention that I could sell them if I wanted to, but over time I kind of retired and I just leave them be. And they, those are, those are 200 gallon pots. So you can see they can get pretty big in a 200 gallon pot. Yeah. And there's a couple of them I've got in 300 gallon pots. Oh wow. Now these are purple star apples. Oh wow. This they're... tree and this tree. And they always took a toll. Uh, they're very sensitive to being knocked down and root breakage and they take years to recoup yeah. and uh yeah but how do they do now are they you know, uh yeah these these produce a fair amount right now all right we got to stop a second here because this is called a china a china is that a china a china it's a soft flesh yeah i have one it's a favorite tree in my yard it tastes amazing and you can look at them all the way up there i mean there's a lot of them up there now is that, that's a grafted one, yeah? Yes. So I got a bunch of seedlings I'm about to put in the ground. That's... Yeah, well you can see this is essentially in the ground now. It's yeah. Split open. <laughs> and look how close it is everybody to the, to the star You can see all right the fruit here. on it. I mean, There's it's... a bunch of fruit. So these do okay in the shade pretty much. Yeah, I don't have any problem with jackfruit in the shade. It's, it's, uh, it's mainly the sapodilla that gives me a hard time with shade. Like, this is sapodilla here. That's a star apple, right? No, that's no, a sapodilla. This is sapodilla here. Okay. And uh, this is a hasha. And it fruits a little, but not a lot. But that fruits like great. Oh, that fruits like crazy, yeah. That's amazing fruit right there. Yeah. And yeah, that's an amazing taste. But fruit. most people, 
like the crunchy ones. Yep, yep, yep. Not yep. soft ones. Yeah. But there's certain people that like the soft ones, like uh, Jamaicans. Yeah. Uh, some of the people down in Belize. Uh, like me. <laughs> I love the soft ones. Yeah. Oh, you like soft Oh, ones. I love one. I got that. I got a Boca Champa Doc from Excalibur once. Oh, okay. That's nice, but those are my favorite. Yeah. And I got a Black Gold. I love oh, yeah. The soft. yeah. Black Gold is really good. I like probably, for soft, I like Black Gold the best. Yes. So. Very nice. Now, here's a tree that died on me. I, I don't know what happened. Remember I said I had two that died on me? Yeah. This is the second one. I don't know what happened. i got to just take that thing out. So i uh, got another Keith Mango here. Wow. This is Alano. And this tree right on the fence here, I let it go. That's a seedling. Uh, and it's, it's a uh, Valencia Pride. But because it was a seedling, they're only about half size, and they have a little different flavor to them. But some people really liked it, so I just left it grow. <laughs> yeah, did, did you name it? Give your own name? Uh, I don't think so. I'm gonna see you know, the seedlings, you can call whatever you want. Yeah, I, I forgot what I put on. I just said Valencia Pride Hybrid. <laughs> so when that first fruited, how long did it take for the seedling to fruit? Do you remember? Actually, this one fruited pretty quick, probably within three years. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. And we got a Mame here, too. Mame. Yeah. That's your Pantane, right? That's always Pantane, loaded, you yeah. said? Uh-huh. Well, I know you cut that back, because that's not very tall at all. No, actually, I haven't cut that one back. Really? No. It just stayed small. It just stayed small. Oh, wow. Amazing. Now the, the one out front is my best tree for, for Mame. This is a Mame here too, and it, it produces fairly well. Wow, it stays pretty small too. This is a uh, um, sour sap. Right oh, that there. one. Okay, how many sour saps do you have? Uh, so I have uh, just two trees. How do they do out here? They do very well. Yeah, very well. Is that from seed or breath? You don't know? I don't remember. It's probably yeah. seed. I think it's seed. These are more hasha. Hasha. Another mame here. Another mame. Yep. Now, down along here, these are mainly uh, mangoes, different varieties. The old classic mangoes, the varieties of mangoes. Yeah, they do very well. This, I uh, forgot. I think I forgot. I think this is one of these. You have another sapodilla here. Okay, this one's an ox. An ox. This one's a hasha here. Hasha. Yeah, it's a little out of season. Yeah. This is the other uh, sour sop here. I used to give away some of the leaves to a couple customers, and they make a tea, dry yeah. the leaves and make a tea for like a chemo drink. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, Now, I just want to show you. I grew this thing from a seed. What is that? It's an avocado. An avocado from a seed. In a, how, how big is that pot? Uh, that's a 450-gallon pot. 450-gallon pot. This seed, this avocado from a seed. And how does it produce? It hasn't produced yet. Hasn't produ how old is it? Uh, it's only... Maybe three years. Wow. Uh, what I years, probably should have done on this one is cut it halfway up and let it branch out more. But here again, I'm retired yeah. and I, I, I don't care to do it anymore. 
I'm 80 years old. <laughs> I was going to add 80 years old. Okay. And uh, I want to show you the mame out front. So we're just about done here. So even though you're 80 and you're retired, do you still enjoy the trees or do you ever get a feeling like you just want to move to a place that has oh, no, no trees? Oh, no, no. I enjoy the trees. Okay. Um, I'm a tree nut. I like trees. Uh -huh. As you can see around the pool here. Yeah, you got about a, a lot of trees. Uh, more palms, though. Now, are you, do you have children? Oh, uh, they're. I have two, but they're fully grown. They're okay. got families of them. Well, when they were growing up around these trees and stuff, wherever they live now, do they have their own trees as well, or they don't even care about trees? No, they don't care about trees. Okay. So, uh, the mame over here. This mame here, believe it or not, it's it's in a 300-gallon pot in the ground. Wow. And it's about my best producer as far as mame go. It's pantene. Wow. And uh, it loads up every year. Wow. It's amazing. So, Absolutely amazing. It does very well. Wow. And this is a baobab here. It's... it's uh, I, I tried to pollinate it, but I, I was never successful. Is that a fruit? They grow like a sausage fruit. Oh, okay. But it's inedible. Yeah, only the elephants eat it. Yeah, that's what I heard. Now, I remember you had something over here. You had a, I forgot which tree it was, like one of these. Which ones are these? Uh, well, this is, uh, again, a star uh, apple. Star apple. This is a lychee right here. Lychee, I think that's might have been a lychee. No, you had a, you used to have a mulberry around here, right? Yeah, I, I got rid of the mulberries because okay. uh, for a couple of reasons. First, you can't make any money off the thing. Yeah. And and second, they, they get a fungus very easily. You're always constantly having to spray those things. Oh, okay. Uh, this big tree back here is a cinnamon tree. And I've actually topped that thing twice already. Wow. I mean, it grows like a weed. Wow. No fruit, it just smells like cinnamon. The leaves are cinnamon? Yeah, you can get the yeah. smell from the cinnamon. Wow, that's cinnamon. your biggest tree, you think? Tallest? Uh, well, it, again, I've topped it twice. Yeah. Uh, I'd say the Valencia Prides are probably my bigger trees. Okay. And uh, although if I just left this grow, it'd probably be bigger. You know, they, they get the cinnamon from the bark. Yeah. And when the trees get real mature, the bulk tends to lift away, and they, they just peel it off the, the, of the trunk. And uh, if i known how big those were, I would have never planted that one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is You can see some of the trees have been tipped over from the storms. The only problem is when you get a hurricane, usually you get a lot of rain, and you got to get those trees up real quick. Because once it gets dry, you're going to bust all the, all the roots trying to get them back up. And uh, well, anyway, that's beautiful. That's about it. After all these years, I'm back here, and this looks wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, they. Uh, I got a couple of bale bobs and pots here. This one is busted out of the pot now. Now, what's a fruit that you've tried years later? that you hadn't known about back then that you would have said, oh, I wish I would have known that about 20 years ago. Like maybe I haven't seen any anonas here or white sapotes here or anything like that. Is there something that well, you, I, you, you, I've you, had all those trees. You had them. So I remember you had uh, the whole fence line. There used to be uh, uh, sugar apples. And then I had several Atamoya trees. I had some custard apples, but I did away with them because the Chelsea fly was so bad with them. Uh, I had a hard time trying to protect them. And then I, I had a lot, also guava. The guava got so labor intensive, you got to bag each and every fruit to keep it away from the bugs uh, again. So I, I said it just wasn't worth the effort. Mm -hmm. So I got rid of those trees. Okay. And just concentrated on sapodillas and jackfruit and well, mangoes. What about white sapote? Did you have that? I had a white sapote, just one tree one time. Uh, 
I wasn't impressed with it. I didn't like the flavor of it. Oh, wow. Okay. So I, I, I did away with that one. Okay. So over the years, I did away with a lot of trees and replanted. And as I got more customers and I knew what they wanted, what they would buy, then I, I kept changing it. Yeah. Now, do you have a septic tank on your property? Yeah. And how close do you plant to that or you don't even care about the drain field? Do you just plant right over or do you keep it in mind and keep it empty? No, I'll show you where it is. Okay. Oh. Uh, that's uh, when people like me have a small yard and they try not to go over the drain field, you hear nightmares about it, but... No, I would say stay away from the drain fields. Is there some things that root, like small that could be okay, like maybe a sugar apple or just keep everything yeah. away? Yeah, well, if you plant like a sugar apple, because they're a small tree, my leach field is right, right here. Okay. Right here. So I have a big pot over it, set right there. And that, that's the only thing near it is that, that pot. And that pot is okay. Now, one of the things about pots is you got to definitely keep them watered, right? More than if they were in the ground, right? Uh, yeah, it would help it because they sit higher. Yeah. Yeah. So what about that tree? Is that right in the middle of your leach field, that one that died? No, the okay. leach field is right through here. Okay. You can see my septic tank there. You can see the lids on it. And you, you planted strategically around it? Well, when you, you can, when you planted back then? Yeah, I, I kept away from the leach field. Okay. I didn't want to plant over the leach field. Otherwise, you'll, the roots will clog up the leach field. <laughs> yeah. So. And what, what about mulch? I know you, I mean, have you mulched over the years when they were getting established or did you never just mulch? No, I mulched a lot. What I did is I had a huge horse manure pile back there. And I was very fortunate. I knew the guy out at Wellington and I got all the horse manure I wanted for nothing. I was doing them a favor and they were doing me a favor. So it worked out well. So uh, I put horse manure around at least once a year. About, Even the established, the well-established big trees or just the smaller trees? All, all trees. Now, when you put them around, how far away did you just put them on a drip line, or did you put them against the bark? No, you don't put it against the bark. You got to stay away from. The but bark. did you did you go all the way out to the drip line, like the edge of the yes. tree? Yes. Okay, so yes. it didn't. It makes no sense to put them under the tree, right? Because you're not get feeding the roots, correct? Well, I I have a loader, and I I take a, a full bucket, and bigger trees, two buckets. I dump it there, and then I had uh, my Guatemalan friends. They just spread it around the tree. Okay. So, but all the way, it came all the way out to where the tree comes. Yeah, they it. started near the near the bark, but not on the bark. Yeah. I always told them, to don't put any on the bark, because it will it will rot the bark. Yeah. And uh, but around now, I haven't done that now for a couple of years. I've I've kind of quit quit it's a big that job. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a big job. And were you I, ever concerned what the f horses were being fed that it can affect the trees at all, or that never concerned you? That never concerned me. In fact, they treat those horses real good out there, and they they spray it. So I never had a fly problem either. Yeah. Because they 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 treated it good. I remember one time I I got some manure from a lady down the street. She didn't treat it. Oh my God, the flies. It was like a blanket of flies. Well, that's good because when you say they spray it, doesn't mean that there's chemicals in it. Well, yeah, there's chemicals in the, but, the but aren't fly those, spray. Aren't those chemicals getting into the into the well, ground? It, that's it, supporting it never, the tree. Never bothered the trees. Okay. It never bothered me anyway. Okay. So. And now I see here, there's still room, like back there against your fence line. You had a bunch of trees. I know you're old and retired, but if you were younger or if you decided to, can you plant a whole bunch of like jackfruits right against that fence with no problem, you think? I could, but what I had along there, those were all my sugar apples. Oh. I had 32 sugar apples along there. Because and what was your issue with the sugar apples? You said you had a, a fly that messed it? Chelsea flies. They, they sting it and they, they lay their eggs in there and then the egg matures and it comes out through a little tiny hole. Yeah, that's the same thing with the custard apple. And, exactly, and the same thing. Apples, the animoyas. The Chelsea fly is is an enemy, and uh, now all my now the other thing with my my uh, uh, sugar apples, they were in pots. I had them in hundred gallon pots, 
all along there. So it didn't go in the ground. And, uh, but I finally just did away with them because I, you couldn't make any money off them because you, you couldn't sell fruits with all those holes in them. Yeah. And it, it, it kind of made the inside black. They, they were useless. So when I first started, I didn't have a problem with Chelsea fly. And then a few days, a few years later, I had them all the time. So I, I did away with them. So, uh, I don't see any dragon fruit. Have you ever had any dragon fruit? I had a lot of dragon fruit, uh, right there near my septic tank. Uh, I had dragon fruit. Yeah. And, and, uh, I had yellow ones. Is this edible? Oh yeah, definitely. Can I try one? Sure. Go ahead. So tell us about your dragon fruit. Why I try this. Uh, I had yellow and red. Uh, the only one I really liked was the red cause it was more flavorful. Uh, the other ones were not, but they were a son of a gun to pollinate. You, uh, you, the pistols on the dragon fruit were very long and the pollination kind of missed itself. So, uh, but here again, when the hurricanes came, I mean, they get real heavy and I had them in 200 gallon pots, big pots and the, the hurricane just knocked them all over. And it wasn't for a loader. I would have never gotten them back up again. And then the hurricanes came again. And I said, this is more trouble it's worth. Yeah. And I never had that many because the red ones are very hard to pollinate. Sure. So, so for me, particularly, I, I don't do it to sell it. I do it to eat it, the fruit. So like yeah. there's some trees I don't want. I don't want the Jamaican cherries because they're just, they're just not, they're fun and it tastes good, but they're nothing substantial. So I had about three cherry trees too. Yeah. Nothing substantial, like mulberries. Yeah. So I finally did away with those. So what would you suggest for somebody like me looking for just for food? Like you got the avocados and the jackfruit that are very hearty. And uh, I would say avocados, jackfruit, mangoes, and sapodilla are the main ones. Now sapodilla, the, the only issue with those is even though they grow great is they don't all ripen at the same time. So you can't sit down and have a meal of sapodilla. Right? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Like you'll pick a couple off the tree, but they don't all ripen the same exact time. No, Unlike, they don't. But mangoes and jackfruit, they're all getting ripe at the same time. No, on sapodillas, I always had to go around there and scratch the skin a little bit. And it, it should be almost turning yellowish. And that way, you know, they were ripe. Uh, you could also pick them. And if they're near ripe, they won't give you much of that white sap. So, yeah. In fact, they used to make the, the uh, chewing gum with that. Yeah. Not anymore, but they used to. Yeah. What about things like a uh, grumachama cherry and things like that? Have you had those? Yes, I have. But again, uh, I just did away with all those because you can't pick very much. What are you going to, you know, it's hard. Back then, it was hard to charge more than two, three bucks a pound, you know. Now, my maize take years to grow. Do you think it's worth planting my may trees, considering they take so long to grow, and also you could just buy them in a store, even though they're a little expensive? Uh, Space-wise, I'm talking about. Like, when you're looking at what to grow to get the most food. Oh, I like Mame. In fact, that's my favorite milkshake, Mame Sapoti. Yes. Yeah, it's... No, I would... Mame is another good one. I know a lot of people have had problems uh, growing those. Uh, like that one tree out there, it produces very little near the near the driveway. Yeah. This one over here that's in a 300-gallon pot in the ground produces like crazy. Same variety. Uh, yes. Wow. And uh, I don't know why that is. I remember when I was working part-time at Excalibur helping them out on weekends, I had a lot of complaints about mame. They, they plant mames and they never did very well. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure what the secret is, but that one does very well. Yeah. So, so anyway. And do you have a concern? Like a lot of people today are planting trees very close together. They call it high, intens high intensity gardening. Even mango trees, they're planting really close and they just, their idea is to keep them smaller. What's your opinion about well, that? On mangoes, I always said, depending on the size of your yard, you know, these trees here are Lindsay Prize. They're very big. Uh, I always recommended uh, the smaller mangoes. 
and and uh, uh, and you just have to prune them back. But again, that's that's a lot of work. If you yeah. got the space, mangoes, I'd say my top fruit because you can really enjoy those, especially. Yeah. Because the mangoes you buy in a store are terrible. They Absolutely. pick them green. They're they're always fibrous because they ship well. They don't bruise as easy. But uh, these are really good, good mangoes. Now I haven't seen many bananas on your property. What's what's your feelings on bananas? Well, I had a, a bunch back there. Uh, they're Vietnamese bananas. They're finger bananas. And uh, here again, they're a lot of work because when you pick a a stock, you got to cut that stock off and get rid of it, otherwise it'll just rot in the ground and smell. Yeah. So you got to wait for the suckers to come up. But uh, again, they're a lot of work. I, I agree. Now another thing I don't like to have in my yard because I have such a small yard is anything to do with vines. I don't. I like. I love to eat passion fruit taste, but they make a mess because of the vines. I don't see passion fruit here or vines here. What's your opinion about vines? Uh, fruit? I uh, I grew passion fruit for a while. I set up fence line, like, like growing grapes, and I had passion fruit. But here again, uh, the animals would pick them and carry them off very easily. So I, I, I got rid of that. I was actually going to grow some uh, Indian vegetables for a while, mostly vine stuff. I had it set all up, but the first hurricane took it all down, and I said, forget this. Yeah. Just stay, stay with the big trees. Uh, and I yeah. see some of your trees here. They get bit by the what's those white flies. Yeah, I don't. I don't worry about that. They don't affect the fruit. They just. Uh, uh, what affects the fruit is those mites. Uh huh. And. Uh, but anyway, I'm. Be truthful. I'm not that particular anymore because I'm I'm retired. So. Yes. Well, you got a great place here. Thank you. All right, everybody, that was our amazing tour around this place. I told you it was amazing, and I told you I'd take you back to the front here and show you these trees here and how close they are. So uh, thank you for watching and subscribe and like, uh, or like and subscribe if you did. This place is amazing. I'm so glad I got to come back here. I'm going to turn the camera around and show you some of these uh, trees here and how close right, they so are. As uh, Joseph was telling us, these are jackfruits in the front of his property. Look how close these jackfruits are and they're growing up straight up and if it's only planted a jackfruit they're going to grow wide but when you have them like this they grow up they're going to grow wide or up now it's not good for hurricane purposes but if you want to get the most fruit just take this place here and look how close uh these trees are and you can get away with this with jackfruit and i never thought you could until this trip here so and and what he said about seedlings was pretty cool too so I'm always one to say, if you're not, if you don't have a big space, don't plant seedlings because you don't know how they're going to turn out. But if you're going to get fruit only two years later, it might be worth a try just to see how it's going to turn out. So very cool. Very cool. And uh, now if you don't have to worry about anyone stealing your jackfruit, maybe plant a fence line of jackfruit and plant them close and see what happens. All right. Uh, so that is our tour here. Thank you everybody for joining. Uh, this is just really a surreal moment for me because this is a place that I used to come down from New York to go to an, another nursery in the area and pass this house and stop off here and get some fruit. I, I, I might have had one of my first jackfruit right off the tree at this very place. And a lot of these trees that we saw here today, I, I've eaten food from a long time ago, long time ago, maybe 20 years ago or so. Really, really amazing. Uh, so it was great to come back here. Great to see Joseph. And uh, and great to be back in the ground, in the land uh, that I passed by so many times wondering whatever happened here. So this is just a great example of what you could do. This is just two and a half acres. And he's done so much. Uh, even with a quarter acre, you could do a lot like I do. All right. Put your comments and questions below. Uh, thank you, Joseph, for letting us in your yard and your amazing space and for all you do. All right, everybody, until then, have a great day and keep growing.